Are you new to running or consider yourself somewhat of a beginner? Well, before you lace your shoes up, I have 11 tips to help get you running. Tip one, just start running and have fun. It's a fantastic sport, but make sure you start short. It's very easy to get excited at the start, but you do not need to be covering three, four, or five kilometers right away. Instead, break it down, keep it short, and build that fitness gradually. Tip two, similarly, you want to keep your running to a nice, easy pace when you're starting out. So your body needs time to get used to these new stresses and strains of running. Far too many people start out running far too hard and then they pay the price for this mistake. The obvious being that you just crumble mid-run, but also you could run the risk of getting injured. So to avoid this altogether, just try and keep those runs to a nice, easy and conversational pace. Tip three now, well, the beauty of running is its simplicity. You can just head out of your door and run. But there is one thing that can totally transform your running, and that is your running shoe. Having learned the hard way myself, I would honestly recommend investing in a good pair of running shoes. Now, if you are new to running, I'd actually suggest heading on down to your local running store and getting some expert advice as to which shoes you should get for your current gait. So that's basically the way in which your foot lands and rolls through during the running action. It can make a huge difference to your running and hopefully make running far more enjoyable in the long run. Okay, now time for a tip four, and by now, you have likely ignored my advice and probably head out for your first run, and now you're dying to get out for your next one. Hence watching this video, which is obviously absolutely brilliant, but before you do that, I'd really recommend that you actually try and take a day off between each of your runs, because as I mentioned already, your body is trying to get used to these new stresses and strains of running, and so by following this day on, day off method, can really help to avoid those overuse injuries. Tip five, to maintain some consistency with your running, I really advise you mix up the surface that you're running on. The pavement or sidewalk is great for fast running, but obviously it's quite a hard surface. So that's a lot of impact to be going through the joints run after run. Whereas the off-road can help with this, obviously it's a much more forgiving surface, but with that, there is the increased risk of maybe rolling an ankle or whatnot. Then we have the treadmill. Now that's great for all year round running, despite what the weather or conditions are outside, although it can feel quite different to running outside. So those are just three examples of different surfaces that you can run on, all with their pros and cons. My advice would be to just try and mix it up for variety, if nothing else. Tip six go for distance and not time. It can be far too easy to fall into the trap of focusing on the speed, the time, the pace of each of your runs. Instead though, we just wanna keep those runs nice and easy as I've already advised. Forget about that pace and just focus on the distance that you're covering. Maybe you have a route quite close to you that you know the rough distance of. If so, forget about your watch, leave that at home, or maybe even just don't check that pace. And it can be amazing how much more enjoyable those runs can be. Which brings me on to Tip seven, walking is not a failure, particularly so if you are just starting out with your running. See, I've raced to a fairly high level and I'll still occasionally walk during some of my runs. Sometimes your body just needs it and actually this moment of walking allows you to compose and collect yourself and can mean that you actually end up running further after that. However, for some people out there, I understand it can be hard just getting that continuous running in. So why not break it down into some jog walks? Maybe something like three minutes of jogging, followed by two minutes of walking and then with time you can start increasing the amount of jogging reducing the amount of walking now for tip eight see i hate to break it to you but you are going to ache from time to time as you are adapting to this running the new stresses and strains you're going to feel fatigued you're going to be sore and you're going to get tight but it's really important that you stay on top of this and give your body some regular TLC. This means stretching lightly after each of your runs particularly around the calves the quads and even the hips because they can be very often forgotten about but very important indeed. 
Okay, tip nine now, and something I wish I'd done far, far sooner, and that was joining my local running club. Whilst running on your own is great, and I advise you keep doing that, the benefit of running with others can be huge. Sometimes it could just be really hard getting yourself out of the door and getting yourself running, but by having that pressure of joining some other people for a run can really help with that. Also, by its very nature, having a friendly group of runners, they can really help and support you as you progress as a runner. But now onto tip 10, and with that in mind, it's really important that you build your running up very gradually. Adding too much distance too soon could lead to burnout or even injury. So I normally suggest following the 10% rule. So by that, I mean never adding more than 10% to your weekly runs or your weekly volume. And that brings us on to my final tip 11, and that is to keep a track or log of this distance or volume with your training. Now, it doesn't need to be anything fancy or online. It actually just be the old school way, just a bit of pen and paper. But with that, try and write out a rough plan in advance, keeping to that 10% rule that I've just mentioned, and maybe setting some small achievable goals along the way. Well, I hope those tips have been of use to you and helped you out. And of course, welcome to the world of running. I really do hope you enjoy it. If you'd like to ask any more questions, if you've got any more that you'd like to find out about, drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you've enjoyed today's video, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, you can click on the globe and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see our how to start running and an eight week program to your first 5K, you can see that by clicking just down here. If you'd like to see how to choose a running shoe, you can see that by clicking just down here.